This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and today is Wednesday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10. Just last week, we had an update to the banned and restricted list, and it got me to thinking about what cards were in existence for the shortest amount of time before being added to the list in some format, and that's the topic of this video. For this video, I looked up the release date for the set each card was in, and then counted the number of days it was legal in all formats before being banned or restricted in at least one. Before we get started with the number 10, there's actually a card that I felt really sure would make this list, and I'm sure a lot of you are pretty sure it'll be on the list too, but it's actually an honorable mention, and it actually comes in at number 11. And that's Skull Clamp, which I think is sort of a poster child for a card that had to be banned really quickly, but it turns out there are 10 cards that were banned even more quickly than it was. In my head, Skull Clamp was banned within weeks of being printed, but in reality, it took almost four months. And while that's a pretty short period of time for most cards that get banned, it is longer than anything else on this list. Wizards had only recently introduced equipment and, frankly, didn't know what they were doing with it a lot of the time. Famously, Skull Clamp was changed really late in design because nobody thought it would be good no matter what. The equip cost was lowered and the minus one toughness was added and it was supposed to be a downside. That last change is what definitely broke it though. Skull Clamp is a busted card in decks running smaller creatures as it essentially lets you pay one mana to draw two cards. The worst thing about Skull Clamp is that even before it was around, goblins and affinity decks were already doing pretty well and they got even better when this came out. Skull Clamp was initially banned June 1st, 2004 in Mirrodin Block and Standard, but would also be banned in Legacy later in the year. It's kind of crazy to me that this card didn't get banned sooner, as it immediately created problems in Standard, but Wizards does have a tendency to ride things out and see if people can find a way to counter a card before banning it, but that never happened with Skull Clamp. Alright, let's move to number 10. At number 10 is Smuggler's Copter, a card from the relatively recent past. Vehicles were first introduced in Kaladesh, and Wizards really wanted to push the new subtype from the beginning, sort of like they did with equipment, so a good portion of them turned out to be pretty good and constructed. Smuggler's Copter, though, was a little bit too pushed. A 2-mana 3-3 flyer that loots every time it attacks or blocks is incredibly good, and the fact that it, like other vehicles, dodges all sorcery speed removal, including board sweepers, is a big problem. The Copter made control decks in standard really bad, and everyone was just playing a deck with four Copters. Since it was colorless, you could shove it anywhere, and everyone is playing aggro. A higher mana cost or crew cost could have made this a really good card in standard instead of a busted one. Smuggler's Copter was only in standard for just over 100 days before being banned out of the format entirely. And as expected, this resulted in a more dynamic standard format. At number 9 is Mental Misstep. This is another case of Wizards introducing a new mechanic and not really realizing how busted it was. Phyrexian spells made spells that had a converted mana cost of 1 free, which also meant that you could play cards with Phyrexian mana costs in any deck. Now, every single deck could run 4 Mental Missteps no problem, and games often came down to who had more Mental Missteps in the early going. This did not make for dynamic or interesting decks or gameplay, and any time a card is played by everyone, it is probably a good call to ban it, like they did with Smuggler's Copter. The card was especially powerful and extended, and when the format ended and was replaced with Modern in 2011, Mental Misstep was on the preliminary ban list for the format only 94 days after it was released. It would subsequently also be banned in Legacy. At number 8 is Felidar Guardian. While the Guardian isn't like the first few cards we talked about, it isn't colorless and it wasn't completely ubiquitous in its format, it was still pretty busted. Wizards has since admitted that they completely overlooked the fact that a turn 4 two-card combo existed between Felidar Guardian and the Planeswalker Saheli Rai, and that is the kind of combo that is far too fast and consistent for standard. After allowing the combo deck to exist for a while and waiting to see if the format would find a way to take care of it, Wizards decided to remove the overpowered combo from standard, banning Felidar Guardian only 92 days after it was released. And number 7 is Mishra's Workshop, which is from Antiquities. The banned and restricted list at this point 1994, was in its infancy, having only been formed in January of the same year as Wizards prepared to host the first Magic World Championship later in 1994. It was a busy year for bannings and restrictions, with lots of cards being put on and taken off the list as Wizards tried to create the environment they envisioned for Worlds. One of the things that Wizards consistently took action with was Fast Mana, which they didn't want to be completely out of control, so they restricted cards that would allow fast starts so they wouldn't happen as often. A restriction means only one copy of a card can be played, it isn't banned entirely. Mishra's Workshop gives you some pretty insane mana, provided you have a deck filled with artifacts, and that was not very hard to do, thanks to the fact that Antiquities was an artifact-heavy set, and there were just a lot of powerful artifacts in the game already at this point. 
As a result of the concerns about how much mana this could create, the workshop was restricted only 73 days after Antiquities was released. At number six, we actually have three cards. All of them were from Antiquities, like Mishra's Workshop, and all three of them were restricted with the May 16th, 1994 announcement. Antiquities had released on March 4th of 1994, and these three cards were all restricted 56 days later. These cards aren't as obviously powerful to us today as the first few cards we've looked at, but obviously enough, Wizards viewed them as problematic back in 1994. Candelabra of Thanos had some serious infinite mana combo potential. Feldon's Cane let you shuffle powerful cards that were restricted back into your library, sort of defeating the purpose of restricting cards in the first place. And Ivory Tower made it very difficult for anything but control decks to succeed. So they were all restricted to one copy per deck on May 16th, 1994. At number 5 is Maze of Ith, another card added to the restricted list in 1994, but it was from the Dark, not Antiquities. Maze of Ith is in the same sort of category as Smuggler's Copter and Skull Clamp. Because it was colorless, and indeed in this case, a land, all decks could run Maze of Ith with no problem. Wizards wanted to limit how many of these players could run because they made games long and uninteresting, and it was yet another card that really benefited control players at the expense of aggro players, so they took the step of restricting it only 50 days after it had been released. At number four, we actually have another trio of cards, a rather famous trio from Urza Saga, Tolarian Academy, Stroke of Genius, and Windfall. Tolarian Academy produced absurd amounts of mana, Windfall made it too easy to rip through your deck, and Stroke of Genius gave you a place to spend the massive amount of mana you produced with your academy, resulting in an utterly broken deck. The deck ran various ways to untap the academy and did so while continuing to draw cards, meaning that all the necessary mana to mill the opponent out with Stroke of Genius was more of a foregone conclusion than it should have been, and Wizards had to act or this deck would make up 100% of the metagame. Wizards reacted really harshly in this case, as they probably should have. Less than two months after these three cards had made their debut, Tolarian Academy and Windfall were banned in Standard Extended and Legacy and Restricted in Vintage, and Stroke of Genius was banned in Legacy and Restricted in Vintage. And number three is Lingering Souls, which was printed in Dark Ascension and banned out of Innistrad Block Constructed only 46 days after that set made its debut. Lingering Souls is a very powerful card, since it provides you so many evasive bodies with only a single card and does so very efficiently. Lingering Souls has obviously seen play in a bunch of different formats, and it was pretty clear early on that in Innistrad Block Constructed, token decks were far and away the best deck, and putting up absurd win percentages against everyone else. Wizards reacted by banning both Lingering Souls and Intangible Virtue on March 20th of 2012, and this did enough to keep tokens from continuing to be the far and away best deck in the format. At number two, we have Memory Jar, which barely made it two weeks before being banned in multiple formats. Memory Jar was from the same block as the Tolarian Academy combo deck, and while that deck had been banned out of existence by this point, there were plenty of other combo decks dominating the game, ushering in the so-called Combo Winter, during which time broken combos were just about the only thing worth doing in most formats. Memory Jar was the kind of card that really enabled these silly combo decks, since it drew you so many cards and could be played in any deck since it was colorless. Any self-respecting combo deck can usually win the game by drawing 7 cards, and that's the kind of impact Memory Jar had. It made busted combos even more busted, and made the combo winter even more oppressive. Wizards realized that the card was a problem almost from the moment they printed it, and banned it in Urza's block, constructed in Legacy, and restricted it in Vintage. However, Wizards seems to have felt that the card was fine for Standard and Extended, but that ultimately proved not to be true, as it made combo decks the dominant force in those formats as well. Wizards did an emergency ban of Memory Jar in those formats just a couple of weeks after the March 1st announcement. In other words, they didn't wait until the next scheduled announcement. They were concerned enough about the card that they wanted it banned right away, and so Memory Jar ended up banned and restricted in every single format by mid-March of 1999. And at number one, we have Mind's Desire, a card that was banned in Legacy and restricted in Vintage less than a week after being printed. Storm is a famously broken mechanic, and Mind's Desire is one of the more busted things you can do with it. Both Legacy and Vintage had so many different ways to draw a ton of cards, play cheap spells, untap lands, and so on, that it was very easy to cast a huge Mind's Desire and just cast every spell in your library in a single turn. This was completely degenerate, it wasn't that easy to interact with, and obviously enough, it's one of the most broken things Magic has ever seen, and as a result, Mind's Desire is the card that was banned or restricted in a format more quickly than any other card in the entire game. Well, that does it for today's MTG Top 10. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future episodes of MTG Top 10, don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to see MTG Top 10s from the past, the playlist should be on your screen now. Also, if you're interested in more discussion of banned and restricted cards, I also have a whole series on the history of the banned and restricted list, the playlist for which you should also see on the screen right now.
Thanks for watching.